For solid objects, we have a wide range of physical laws, like Newton's law and the laws for, for the conservation of momentum and kinetic energy. But how can we apply those to a fluid? In this clip, we will not solve the problem, but we will try to better define it. Let's take Newtonian mechanics as an example of the physical law we would like to apply to a fluid. If you consider this physical law at a macroscopic level, we would look at a single object or a system. The nice thing of a single object is that we can simply identify it, also after it has moved, for instance. Favorite examples of the objects used in physics textbooks are things like cars and footballs. But now, how useful is that if you want to study the water that is poured into a glass? If we would study this flow as if it is the motion of a solid, we would, for instance, invoke Newton's second law and try to find out what would be the relevant mass of the object, which forces are applied to it, and what would be the resulting acceleration. This would work for a fixed mass, but we cannot identify an object with a given mass here. So the alternative would be to define a volume in which we study the fluid flow, a control volume. Such a control volume can be constant in space, attached to the object in which the fluid flows. But the control volume could also move with a certain relevant object, for instance with the ship. And one step more complex, you could also have a control volume that changes in time both in size and shape. For instance, the volume below a piston in an engine. In this course, we will only consider constant control volumes. We came up with the idea that we can describe fluid motion in a control volume. Well, that's all very nice, but now we run into the problem that our existing physical laws are not directly applicable to this situation. So to summarize our problem, if we want to describe fluid flow at a system level, we can on the one hand consider a mass system. The mass system would be the collection of fluid particles that we consider it in is fixed and those fluid particles then move with the fluid. For this mass system, the physical laws are still directly valid, but it is hard to identify because we cannot simply color the particles blue or red, so we cannot see those mass particles. Alternatively, we could consider a volume system, considering the fluid motion in a control volume. That is easily identifiable, but then we do not have the physical laws available to describe this fluid flow. So, there is one remaining step to find out how we can make the relation between physics in a mass system and the physics in the volume system. The final answer will be the Reynolds transport theorem.